Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society here in Kitsap County, Washington. That's western Washington, right down by sea level. I was finding lobsters in July, and here we are in the middle of August, and I'm still finding them out here. So I want to show you what the habitat looks like and what these beautiful lobster mushrooms look like. We're going to harvest some. So let's go into the forest. Make sure you hit subscribe in the summer in the Pacific Northwest. Mushroom Wonderland. As I look over here, something catches my eye. These are super bright, just sticking out. See what we got here? I mean, wouldn't that catch your eye? If you, if you were just walking by, you'd be like, what the heck? Is that boom look at these gorgeous lobster mushrooms they're dirty mushrooms these are actually oh two different mushrooms in symbiosis with each other it's actually more of one parasitizing the other one so quite a difference between a symbiosis and a you know a parasite uh, a parasite actually is consuming this but they're not really consumed these are beautiful. Look at these three gorgeous lobster mushrooms. Look how vibrant those are. There's nothing else in nature that really looks like that. You know, the chicken of the woods can, can be pretty impressive. But these are some beautiful, gorgeous lobster mushrooms growing right here in August. So, um, very cool. These are going in this mesh collecting bag and I'll put a link in the description for one of these so you can drop spores as you walk. Pretty handy. So here's another one. Pretty hard to spot, but I see this little frosted uh, whiteness on the ground. Those are the spores from the hypomyces. Some people call it hypomyces. It's kind of a fun way to say it, but uh, they are kind of elusive for being as bright as they are. One of these days, I'm going to teach that dude how to sniff them out. That'd be awesome. But this one, it's got a lot of spores. These are just white spores from the hypomyces. So this one would be okay for dying, but because of the weight of it, I could tell it's pretty hollow because bugs have been eating it. So save them anyways. You can dry them and then learn how to dye fabric later on when you watch another video when I make that one about dyeing fabric. This year has been really good for lobster mushrooms in the Pacific Northwest. Um, normally I seem to find them uh, closer to autumn, you know, at the end of summer when the first rains arrive, they seem to be one of these mushrooms that doesn't mind it being warm out. But this year has been really crazy. There really hasn't been much moisture. Uh, in fact, it's been a really pretty hot summer, but the few times it's rained, I guess has been enough for these mushrooms. Now keep in mind, they are ectomycorrhizal so they have a connection to the tree roots. And so the trees also can feed them some water. So they can be getting moisture from the trees that they're in symbiosis with, as well as other organisms like the mycoheterotrophs, like the ghost pipe. But the ghost pipe also will parasitize the mycelium of the Rusula brevipede. And so um, these mushrooms could be getting their moisture from various sources, from the trees that they're in association with, as well as the mycoheterotrophs that are also uh, retaining some water underground. There's a lot going on underground that we can't see with our bare eyes, but luckily these mushrooms are pretty bright, so they stand out and they're pretty easy to find in the forest. He's got a little bit of a limp. My poor boy's getting old. He just turned nine years old. So this is Gunner, my trail dog, my hound lab, Gunner the trail runner. I'm a pretty avid mountain biker, and so he has been running trails with me since he was, you know, before he was a year old. And so he's had an amazing full life, done just tons of trail running and mushroom hunting and stuff. But he is slowing down, so you'll probably see him in fewer of my videos just because he can't go too far out there. But he's moving just fine. He's moving just fine. So give a little love to old Gun Gun. He's the best dog 
a man could ever ask for. He's my best friend. This is one of the mushrooms that I've recently come across in the dead of summer with virtually no moisture. This one, Pycnoporellus fulgens. So this one is a conch mushroom, a polypore. That's quite orange colored and it grows on a dead coniferous wood here in the Pacific Northwest. This is an old western hemlock that has uh, fallen over and this mushroom is living inside of this log. These are the fruiting bodies. So it's tomentose. It's pretty fuzzy on top and uh, underneath it, it actually has a pore surface. There's no gills on this mushroom. But this one is different than the latiparous, than the chicken of the woods. Might confuse people because they think, oh, this bright orange mushroom that's growing on a log. This has got to be the chicken of the woods. But sorry, it's not. This one is way more woody. Um, Non-toxic, but definitely inedible. Where the chicken of the woods, the leading edge of it, is going to be quite soft and uh, pretty delicious. Uh, when the chicken of the woods gets older, it gets really hard, kind of like this. And chicken of the woods is also a polypore, so this one could be considered a lookalike. This is a lot smaller um, chicken of the woods, usually a big prolific fruiter that will take over entire logs. Or sometimes there'll just be a single bloom of it if it's uh, like Latiparus gilbertsonii, typically grows in just kind of like a tight cluster. Um, and could be confused for this, but the Pycnoporellus fulgens, this one's an edible brown rot decayer, so uh, related to red belted conch. If you look right here, there's a, a red belted conch growing on one of the dead branches of the same tree. So all kinds of different fungal life within this log, um, but unfortunately not a chicken of the woods. So if you're seeing these, just know not a chicken of the woods. So although it has been a dry summer here in the Northwest, and I'm jealous of all the mushroom people that I know on the East Coast that are getting just oodles of mushrooms, they have so much rain out there. Here on the West Coast, anywhere west of the Rockies, we have really dry summers. It just doesn't rain here during the summer, which is weird because people think of Seattle and Washington and Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, and they think of soggy and rainy, and it can be like that during the fall and winter months. But lately, the falls have been happening a lot later, and we don't have any like measurable rain for like an entire month at a time. In the summertime, it might rain two or three times that are that's even an, a measurable amount. So, despite it being really dry, we're still finding lobster mushrooms. So that is super exciting, and also finding chanterelle buttons still popping up. So it is not a bad summer. Uh, a lot of people are saying they're in desperate need to find some mushrooms out there. They're out there. You gotta get out there, you gotta go find them. But as I'm showing you today, there are definitely lobster mushrooms growing out here. And we'll see if we can find a couple of little chanterelle buttons um, just to prove to you there's some good edible mushrooms growing wild out here right now. Growing right here on this little dead log, another piece of hardwood, looks like Fuligoseptica. This is a slime mold. So, it's actually not a uh, fungus, but a slime mold, a mixo. So this one's turning to spores. See that dark color? It's got this pretty yellowish outer color, but right underneath that is all these blackish spores. You see that? These are all spores. And it just disintegrates away. These things grow super duper fast, and they can just pop up anywhere like in weird places i've seen them growing on like just on the cement patio often they uh, grow in gardens at the base of plants and freak people out but this is a slime mold it's harmless and uh it's kind of interesting when you when you come across one if you just do that it looks like it's going to be solid but it's just spores so these make for cool time lapse photography if you catch one young enough but like i said they grow and die so quick that uh, you got to be in the right place at the right time to find one growing to set up your camera and do a time lapse thing, but still kind of cool to come across in nature. Look at this cool Ganoderma aplanatum, or close to that, anyways. It might be slightly genetically different, but this one, the artist conch growing on this tree, and there's kind of a brownish hue on everything around here, this rusty brown color from all the spores this thing produces tons of spores 
And uh, these Ganodermas are related to the reishi mushroom, but this one's not really considered medicinal. Uh, sometimes they get in this pancake stack formation that can look a bit like uh, the agaricon made famous by Paul Stamets. But these ones have this white fleshy surface. And if I use a stick, I can draw on it because it bruises this dark color. Okay, so that's how you know, Ganoderma aplanatum. And people pick these off and they make... <laughs> I'm doing this left-handed. Okay, there's a mediocre face. Not a happy face, but uh, people do beautiful art on these things. So I'm just showing you how it bruises so easily. This kind of habitat that I'm in right here is perfect. I see, I usually see a lot of this like wild blackberry growing. There's sword fern and then even a little bit of grass. This kind of area is prime to slow down and look. I don't know this to be a lobster patch per se right in this particular spot, but this is the kind of uh, ground cover that I would definitely slow down and look for that little hint of bright orange that could reveal your first flag. And a flag is a big mushroom that you can see obviously. And then that's when you slow down and you really start to look for younger ones. And you know, typically with mushrooms, there there is a certain range, but Typically, the younger, the better. We like these lobster mushrooms young, not small, but young and fresh before the bugs get to them. This forest is teeming with mushrooms when it is autumn. But right now, you know, it's a, there's a lot of brush and a lot of foliage in here. So the moisture actually does kind of kind of stay retained down here underneath all of the canopy. All right, so looking right down here on the side of the trail, here we are in the summer, look at that. Now wiggle it out of there, beautiful chanterelle. Look at that. These, these summertime ones that are kind of dry, this morphology looks a little bit more like a fall chanterelle. These guys uh, are really delicious edible ones though, this right here. This is uh, what I call a butter sponge. This is a chanterelle that would be uh, perfect to cook up with a steak or whatever wherever you cook mushrooms with. Look at right down here. Oops. Another little golden chanterelle. And uh, there's another one here. So if there's, they're out here. There's a few out here. No doubt I could find more if that's really what I was after. But another delicious wild edible here in August in the summertime. Ooh, something caught my eye down here in the bushes. Dang, those are super bright and very dry. Look at that. Two gorgeous lobster mushrooms. Oh, and there's another one hiding. This one's pretty hammered by the bugs. I'm going to give it a fling out there. But those are pretty. Look at those. Woo! Gourmet delicacy. Keep your eyes out for these. Man, they're super bright right now. Love it. Very hard, look at that. There's no bugs in there at all. So. Right here, look under this, this shrimp. Oh man, that my ceiling is holding on tight. There we go. Some of that dirt off. Look at right here, another one. Man, these guys are just buried in here. It's hard to even tell which way is up on this one, but nice. And right here on the side of the trail. Beautiful, man, the dog just like literally stepped on it. So the lobster mushrooms are out here for sure. Gorgeous find. So look at this, once again, several pounds of lobster mushrooms. This time in August, last time it was in July. Oh, awesome. Now, this is what happens when you get off the beaten path. You come across bizarre things. Look at this wood. 
Look at how, look at the color of that. You see that? Here's a, another chunk of that wood. This is due to a fungus. And it turns this wood this greenish color. How cool is that? This is caused by Chlorociboria aragonaceans, or the blue-green elf cup. And the elf cups refer to the little fruiting bodies that will sometimes be found on the stick or the log that has changed colors from the fungus. But they're actually kind of rare to come across the fruiting bodies. I find this kind of wood in the forest somewhat commonly. But finding it with the actual fruiting bodies growing on it is a little bit more rare. But it's beautiful. It changes the color of the wood. And uh, people from Italy have been making wood trinkets and carvings with Chlorociboria wood for hundreds of years. And it's a pretty cool practice, actually. If you uh, you know go to mushroom festivals and stuff, you'll often see little trinkets and uh, wood carvings made out of this Chlorociboria wood. I've never actually tried to whittle anything out of it, even though I am a woodworker. So I don't know, maybe one day I'll do that. I just got a lot going on, but it's always cool to see this in the woods. Kind of adds a, a magical touch. This is pretty well deteriorated. This is old and dried out, but nonetheless, an interesting fungus that takes over the wood and turns it this bluish green color and it will stay that color uh, until it completely decomposes. So pretty cool. So I know the videos can get a little bit repetitive this time of year, but keep in mind there are some people who haven't seen these videos yet. So good for the new person. There's also probably some new information that I divulge in my ramblings while I'm out here in the woods. I'm trying to keep these mushroom videos coming in the slow part of the year, but luckily there's still delicious wild edible mushrooms out here. A few things happening in the world of mycology right now. Mycofest just wrapped up out there on the East Coast. I would love to be a part of that maybe next year um but it sounded like a good time lots of great people what do we find here look at that another chanterelle nugget just as i was walking by we'll throw that in the bag it's like a veritable mushroom wonderland out here man there's mushrooms everywhere this is western washington despite it being dry baby we still pulling in all the mushrooms Another thing I saw was if you're paying attention to the news, there's a lady who is being accused of killing like her whole family with death cap mushrooms. She fed them to her family and now they uh, all of them died except for her ex-husband who is in the hospital. Not sure if he's going to survive, but a crazy story in the world of mushroom poisoning. So check that one out from across the pond. I just ran across it on Google. So maybe something I should cover more. I'm ultimately fascinated with poisonous mushrooms and the power they have to kill. And, and especially somebody who's suspected of foul play in her whole family eating these poisonous mushrooms and everybody getting sick and dying except her. Kind of suspect, you know what I mean? Kind of suspect. We got some awesome stuff coming up at the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society this autumn. In September, me and the President David Ansley are going to do the five W's of fungi. That's the who, what, why, where, and when of mushrooms. Um, should be a fun talk to kind of kick off our autumn season. Then in October, we're going to have Alan Rockefeller in person coming to talk to us about whatever his latest talk is about. And that's always interesting. And I always enjoy a good foray with Alan. And then in November, we're gonna have the one and only Daniel Winkler. Daniel Winkler is gonna come in person to the Olympic College in Bremerton. And he's gonna be talking about wild mushrooms. He wrote a book, Fruits of the Forest, and he gave a talk last year at our annual mushroom show. Um, speaking of that, uh, there is a big mushroom show going on October 13th, that weekend in Port Angeles. Uh, the Olympic Fungi Festival, and I, yours truly, is going to be one of the speakers there. Also, Graham Steinrich. We're going to have Alan Rockefeller is going to be there. I think Roger Rabbit from the Shroomery is going to be there. David Rogers, he's kind of the organizer of it all. It's just going to be an awesome deal going on. So, um, the Olympic Fungi Festival, be sure to be there. Happening all that weekend. And then the weekend of November 5th, the first weekend in November... We're gonna be doing our mushroom show at the Olympic College in Bremerton for Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. So a little bit of a plug for us. Uh, go to kitsapmushrooms.org to get more information. And there's gonna be some great talks there from Jeremy Collison of Salisbury Mushrooms, from myself, 
um, from uh, uh, David Ansley. He's going to give a talk how to look at a mushroom. We're going to have some smaller talks about how to use technology to find good mushroom patches. So there are so much plans coming up for the autumn mushroom season. So this was sort of an update, just kind of me walking in the woods rambling while I'm finding awesome mushrooms like these lobster mushrooms and chanterelles. And, uh, you know, it might be dry and it might be hot, but it doesn't mean that there aren't mushrooms out here. You just got to go and be one with the forest. You know, this is about logging hours. Um, the more time you spend in the woods, the more mushrooms you're going to find. Oh boy, look at here. Another good example of what I'm just talking about. A big chunk, daddy. Look at that big fat beef caker. That's a big old golden chanterelle, but it actually is showing some signs of trichoderma of green mold on the cap. So I'm going to not take this one with me, but some people would love that, man. Just cut that off. Look, that's like a smooth chanterelle. We don't have smooth chanterelles in the PNW. It's sort of a morphological defect, I think. Look at that. No gills, no veins at all. Which is, oh, I dropped it. That's okay. You can do that sometimes. A smooth chanterelle. That's cray cray. I'm going to have to take a picture of that and show it off online. <laughs> One thing about this bag is that when you get a lot of mushrooms in it, it kind of starts to bump against your thigh and jostle the mushrooms really hard. And so one thing you could do is take some twigs and stick them in the bottom of this to make it shaped more like a basket. But I often find myself carrying it like this just so that it's kind of more of a gimbal and it's not just bouncing against my body. That's my one complaint with these kind of bags. And that's where the advantage of a basket is. But sometimes I like to go where other people are walking and I don't necessarily want to have a conversation with everybody about what mushrooms are in my basket or what am I doing out here or... Or do I think those are safe? Or do I know what I'm doing? Or that I'm probably going to die? I don't know. I'd rather just avoid all that conversation. So I pick a little bit more discreetly today. Finding a couple pounds of these lobsters and chanterelles um, warrants me having this out. But as we get closer to the trailhead, I'm going to stash this back in my backpack so that I don't get asked the 20 questions. And also, because if there's other mushroom foragers, then I'm not trying to be stingy, but they're going to know that this is a good lobster patch. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I don't know. You can guard your patches as much as you want to or you don't have to. Me, personally, there's some that are nearby home that I really like. And I just kind of, uh, I like to collect the fruiting body. So I'm not going to tell everybody. That's all. So this is kind of a cool thing. Right here, laying out in the middle of the woods. This old safe. Somebody drug this thing out here into the woods long ago. And, uh. Rumor has it that it was connected to a murder in the town. And the bottom of it is all cut and blown open. Looks like some people stuck some beer cans in there or something. But this was a cement safe with, uh, with metal. So somebody definitely went to work to break into this thing. And like I said, the folklore is that uh, there was an axe murder actually at the local uh, bowling alley. And a tragic event. There actually were lives lost. Rumor has it that the safe went missing, and then here it is, out in this forest. So locals know where this place is, but um, kind of mysterious, kind of cool. So thank you all for joining me on this video. Man, we came out good again. The summer of fruitfulness in the Pacific Northwest. We'll see you all in the next episode. Much love, everyone. Peace.